Hey everybody, Ash here with 10 Cents. Today I'm coming at you with my five favorite releases from last year, 2017. These are really just the ones that came to mind first when I decided to do this video. Realistically, if you ask me on a different day, I might change my answer a little bit. But as of right now, I'm gonna go with these. I'm gonna go over each one of these really quickly, tell you some of the notes on them, and give you a quick rundown on the fragrances. So let's do this. I also wanted to let you guys know that I did open up a Patreon. If you're interested in supporting me through that, the link is in the description. I know there are a couple of you out there right now going like, No, I can't believe it, he's so greedy. But even if you don't donate, that's okay with me. And I want to let you guys know every single dollar that I do end up raising through Patreon is going to be reinvested right back into this channel. So it's going to be used to purchase new releases. That way I can do reviews on new releases sooner. Because where I live, I have to order everything off the internet and sometimes from Europe when it comes to new releases. And also, if I end up raising enough money over time, I'll upgrade the camera. That way I can get a little bit of a clearer or better picture on these videos. But again, I don't want to come off like I'm begging for money or anything. If you donate, awesome, I appreciate it. I'll give you shout outs on the videos going forward. All my patrons, I'll shout you out. If you don't donate though, you're still cool in my book. All right, let's take a look at these. First up, Pineapple Vintage Intense from Parfums Vintage. It's got pineapple, bergamot, birch, apple, and ambergris as some of the notes. This one had to make the list because my wife loves it so much. It is easily one of her top three favorite fragrances that I own. At least her smelling it on me, and not her wearing it. This has been talked about a lot by myself, by other channels. It's an inspired by Aventus fragrance. So you're gonna have a similar feel to Aventus. The difference is this concentrates more on that pineapple. It's got a really bright, juicy opening with that apple, pineapple, bergamot mix. There's a little bit of a smoky birch in the dry down, but not a ton. And that dry down does have a really nice mixture of musk, birch, vanilla, and ambergris. On me, it projects it lasts for a long time, but it is a fragrance that I go nose blind to, so I can't pick it up all that strongly, even though people around me can. It is a compliment getter. It is versatile. It is very easy to wear. And to me, this is the pinnacle of the Pineapple Vintage line of fragrances. Pineapple Vintage Classic, Noir, Beyond Noir, Noir Intense, and then regular intense. Pineapple Vintage Intense gets the nod for me over the others, if I were going to just have one. Oh yeah, and there's also x -Batch. I forgot that one. But that smells a little more like Sauvage than it does a Vintage, so I'm not gonna count that one. It's got just the right amount of birch, just the right amount of smoke with that really nice fruity opening. Kind of strikes the right tone for me, hits all the right notes. And this one was one of my favorite releases from last year. Pineapple Vintage Intense by Parfums Vintage. Next up on the list is this guy, John Varvatos Artisan Pure. Notes of Clementine, Orange, Pettigrain, and Thyme. This ends up coming across more like Neroli in the opening though. So it's really similar to Tom Ford Neroli Portofino. Or like a much higher quality 4711. It's an amazing warm weather fragrance that's picked up a decent amount of hype over the past year. If I'm being completely honest with you guys, I really really like John Varvatos fragrances. Almost every single one of them smells great to me. The main issue with Varvatos fragrances though is despite how awesome they smell, their performance is usually pretty crappy. You would expect this one to have terrible performance considering the notes that are in here, but on my skin it's actually really good and is probably the best performing Varvatos fragrance if we're talking about their summer and spring releases. Or fragrances that should be worn in spring or summer. You know what I was trying to say. So yeah, the opening, very fresh, soapy, citrus, neroli, citrus white flowers, and a woody amber musk dry down. With some residual notes of pettigrain and neroli that carry over from the opening in the mid. And I know we keep talking about neroli, and it does really smell like it's in here, even though it's not an official note. Another one that's an easy compliment getter for me, very versatile in the warm weather, and one that you can actually pick up really cheap now because you can find this at discounters finally. I have seen a couple of people say that they bought this and they didn't really get the hype, but for me, this one's a killer. Barbados Artisan Pure. Next up is an indie fragrance. It's from one of my favorite houses. Imaginary Authors Whispered Myths. I did a fragrance review on this last year, if you wanna go ahead and check that out. It's somewhere on my channel, just search for Whispered Myths. Audio quality sucks in that one, but you know, if you wanna watch it, it's there for you. The imaginary note here is Salvaged Shipwreck. Also has notes of natural Cambodian oud, cantaloupe, and cedar, among others. They're listed right here in case you forget them. This one has grown and grown on me. I liked it originally when I first did the review, but I like it more now. The oud here is soft and medicinal. The cantaloupe is fresh and sweet, provides a really nice counterbalance to the oud. They just blend fantastically. There's also a little bit of a salty woodiness that you get, which you would take to be that imaginary note 
of Salvage Shipwreck. For those of you who are unaware of this brand, every single fragrance has at least one imaginary note. Let's grab Bull's Blood. It has imaginary notes of black musk and Bull's Blood, which is not a note you would typically see, I would imagine. But yeah, each one of these has at least one imaginary note, which to me is pretty cool. Each one of these fragrances has kind of a backstory to it, written by an imaginary author. You can check out Imaginary Author's website for more information or Fragrantica. I really do dig the kind of aesthetic behind the house though. It gives me a little bit more of insight into what the fragrance is supposed to be inspired by or what kind of feel that the perfumer is going for. This is one that I like to wear when the weather is blustery outside, when the wind is kicking around, when it's a little bit cool. For me in situations like that, this one just works kind of comforts me. Just love the way it smells. Whispered Myths. It's gonna take me to the fourth one on this list. It is a Paco Rabanne fragrance. You probably know what it is. Pure Excess. Mmm. Vanilla, liquor, myrrh, sugar, and leather. Some of the notes here. Really enunciated those. This is gonna be one where I disagree with the overall feeling on Fragrantica toward this fragrance. On Fragrantica, it's caught a good amount of hate. I imagine it's because of the house, because of the way it was marketed. People love to hate on Paco Rabanne for being cheesy. And I think this just got kind of caught up in that. And it's another one that has grown on me more and more since I reviewed it. To me, this one is a sexy, sweet, nighttime date fragrance. Bottle looks great, in my opinion. I really, really like the gradient going on here. Nice. You've got kind of a fizzy grapefruit ginger opening with myrrh, sugar, and liquor underneath, and a sugary vanilla leather balsamic dry down. It's warm, sweet, and sensual. And I get that it's a sweet, mass appealing fragrance, but some of the hate on this, I feel like is just overactive hating. And I know people love to throw out synthetic as a diss. It's like, that's synthetic. That's synthetic. That's synthetic. But when you really think about it, pretty much every fragrance out there that's not a 100% natural fragrance uh, uses synthetics. So that shouldn't just be an automatic disc that you throw out there. And some of you would probably be surprised at how many really expensive niche fragrances just use synthetics. It's not a bad thing to me. It shouldn't be a bad thing to you. Unless you just love 100% natural perfumery. And if you do, more power to you. Despite all the hater comments, I really, really, really like this one. It's a dope nighttime date fragrance with a great looking bottle, Pure Excess. Gonna take me to the last one on this list. This is also a niche one. And this is another one that got a decent amount of hate and a decent amount of love too. Rosa Parfums Elysium. Grapefruit, black currant, juniper, vetiver, apple, some of the notes in here. This is really just Rosa Dove's take on super people pleasing shit. It's like a high quality niche version of all those blue releases that have been coming out over the past couple years. Yes, you know the ones. Anything that comes in a blue bottle like this, right? But this smells really, really good, I can't deny it. And everybody around me that has smelled this has really liked it, so I can't hate on it. I really like it too. Fresh, bright, tart citrus opening with a vetiver, ambergris, cedar dry down. There's also a solid amount of juniper throughout this fragrance. If you don't know what juniper smells like, you could kind of just imagine the smell of gin. It's close to that. In the dry down, Elysium has a slight similarity to Creed Aventus. To me, it's not close enough to warrant mentioning, but other people have mentioned that. Maybe to them, it's a little bit closer. So you may be the same. That's the only reason I mention it. This one may be a little bit boring to some, a little bit too expensive to others, but it is enormously versatile. You can wear it in any situation imaginable. Hyper people pleasing. It's basically a fragrance that's impossible to screw up when you wear it. Unless maybe you have harsh BO and you spray this over top of it. I wouldn't suggest going that route but any other situation it should work. It's just very easy to wear and smells really, really nice. I can't hate on it. It's not reinventing the wheel, nothing truly new or exciting, but it's one that I reach for constantly and I love wearing when I have it on because I know everyone around me is going to like it as well. That's why it was one of my favorite releases from last year, Rosa Parfums Elysium. Now, like I said, there were a lot of other releases that I could have included here and I thought about doing an honorable mention, but if I ran this out to like 10 or 15 fragrances, at that point it loses a little bit of its power and also would run way too damn long. So I'm gonna go with these five. There we go, let me know some of your favorite fragrances from last year. Let me know those ones you've been wearing and getting good results with. As always, I appreciate you so much for watching. Please leave a like on the video, subscribe if you haven't already done so, I don't know which side the button's on, and hit the bell so you'll be notified when I release new videos. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.